Now that we have the spindle turned to uh, final dimension down here where the legs join, it's time to uh, start getting ready to do the dovetails. Now we finally have all our shaping done uh, and in shot, we're ready to start this little tail and you'll kind of understand now how this little gauge is uh, meant to work. And uh, to start out with, I just uh, do the ends. Uh, and what you want to do here is uh, kind of center the gauge at three quarters is just a little bit more narrow at the fat end than the leg is thick, which is fine. Leg is 13 16 But you want to center right here these two little areas at the gauge. Be sure they're pretty even on both sides. And you want to scribe this little uh, shoulder and the sides of the tail where you can see it and you can kind of see what I've done here. I've got a little, and that was just a little bit to one side, but I would do a little better over here. So uh, we've got the end of our little uh, gauge, even with the end. The edge is pretty well even. And a uh, of course, a good sharp pencil is a good thing here too. So this one's a little bit better. Now that we have the tail laid out on top and bottom, uh, next thing is to uh, cut in the shoulders down the sides. And we're gonna use a cutting gauge. And a cutting gauge has a little knife in it instead of a, uh, like a little pin, you know, this, this one actually has a, cuts the wood, cuts the fibers. And uh, the reason we're doing that, it makes a good place to start our saw. And make several passes if you need to. You want a good, uh, good deep line. And of course on both sides. And uh, one other little thing, uh, I've already set this one. Um, but be sure that your gauge is set to uh, not necessarily it's around five eighths, I think. But you want the knife marks to come in just below uh, these shoulders, right at or just below. Uh, and you know you're right. So be sure before you scribe your lines to to double check that. So with that done. Now we're ready to saw, and we're going to, going to uh, lots of ways to hold these. Uh, this works pretty well for me. I'm just using uh, one of the dogs on my bench, and uh, I'm going to take a hold fast. And to keep from beating the leg up too much, I'm going to uh, put a little block on top of it right there. And as soon as my mallet reappears, We're going to tighten that down. So uh, now with our knife line already there, we're going to take this as a little thin uh, uh, paring chisel. And I'm going to come right down and make a little groove, a little trough right here beside that line. And try not to let your chisel run into that line because this is going to be your shoulder for the, uh, that meets the cylinder of the uh, spindle here in a little while so and if it's not deep enough you can take your uh it's cutting gauge didn't get deep enough and at this point you've got a good shoulder you can run your uh, uh, marking knife down through there and actually take out another little shaving to make the trough deeper so and here i'm just using my dovetail saw and i'm going to get it started and then i'm going to after i kind of get a little bit of a kerf going i'm going to tilt the saw and undercut this And 
and I'm actually going to cut past my baseline just a little bit. And it makes it easier clearing the waste. It does weaken that tail a little bit, but the truth is, if this was to ever break, it's not going to break that tail off. It's going to, something else is going to give first. So it makes it just a little bit easier to, uh, to work with. So now I'm going to uh, start removing waste here and uh, be very mindful of this shoulder. Try not to uh, damage it because it will show. It's very, very, very visible. And we're just uh, kind of using the chisel. Once you get started, you can use the chisel kind of uh, a little bit like a plane here. And I'm using the narrow one and taking most of the waste off. We'll switch to a little bit wider one here in just a minute. You'll notice too, I'm coming across and I haven't come all the way off that other side. Uh, try not to uh, break that. I'm going to actually turn here just a little bit and come back this way. Just try to take a little small shaving, not to uh, uh, damage the shoulder. Okay, I've got just a little bit of pencil mark left and I actually want to take this down uh, to where the pencil mark just disappears. And when we lay out the socket for this, we'll leave the pencil mark. So, uh, works pretty well usually. So now I, I'm, I've got it pretty, pretty close there, so switch to a, a little bit wider chisel. It will reach all the way across. And take the... Uh, last pass with it. And I can still see I've got just a little pencil mark there. Okay, so I know I've got a little extra right up through here. Uh, as you get, you know, you need to be sure and check and make sure this is pretty well straight. And I can see that right there, I've got a little bit of hump still in the middle. So, and you can do all this with a chisel uh, if you want to. A, uh, another option, uh, and this is not a half to, and I usually don't do it. Uh, the shoulder plane can, can straighten and flatten this up a little bit, but you have to be very careful not to damage this uh, shoulder that we were uh, trying hard to uh, preserve. But the one thing nice about the shoulder plane, uh, it, it gets it very straight which is a good thing when it comes time to fit it, but it won't quite reach the bottom. So it's left just a little shoulder. I'm gonna reach under there, under that lip and get it. Okay. With this side uh, finished up, we've got it nice and level and straight now. One little thing uh, is good to check. We have a, uh, and this side is, let's look at this side. Okay, we can see a little bit of layout line. Uh, I've undercut this with a saw when, when we were cutting, and you can see uh, the layout line is pretty much gone on both sides right here. Uh, that's good, but if it's not, and like this one, or you can look down these shoulders right here, and you see I've got a little flat, and I want a little, you don't want a knife, quite a knife edge. You want this flat, pretty small. Uh, but like this side, see that little flat is a little bit bigger. So what we need to do is trim that just a little bit. But like I said, don't want quite a knife edge. Uh, what happens is, is it becomes so, uh, 
thin right there when you try to assemble it into the socket. Even if it's fit and perfect, you'll damage it. So you want just a little small flap, but not a big one. And be sure it's kind of undercut just a little bit. And so there's a couple of ways of uh, accomplishing that. Number one is just a, uh, a regular flat paring chisel like I was using earlier. And if you notice the direction of the grain, which way I've got the leg clamped up is going this way. So I can pair down this way. You wouldn't want to try it the other direction. So you can use the uh, flat chisel and just uh, undercut right underneath there. Or if you have one, we talked about this earlier. This is a little, uh, just an end cannel gouge. It's, it's round on the end and it's sharpened on the inside. And what that allows it to do is we can, we can cut actually just a little, little rounded insides to that inside edge. But like I said, a, a, a thin uh, flat chisel will uh, do the job too. But one way or another, just be sure and check that. Uh, sometimes they need trimming like this one did a little bit. Uh, a lot of times they don't. So uh, it just depends kind of on your undercut when you're sawing. So with that complete, we're ready to go on to the socket on the uh, spindle. So we're moving along, on along here. So we'll catch do that next. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, workshop tours of amazing traditional woodworkers, and tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my free traditional woodworking forum. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started in traditional woodworking. Enjoy!